Hi everyone. Today's video is going to be about Dr. B. H. Martin's Hydro's um, watercolor inks or concentrated inks. Um, sorry, concentrated watercolors they're called. Um, they look like ink bottles. They come in these um, um, in the twelve colors, and I'm trying to. Yeah, it's fifteen mils. So this is what it looks like. Um, it has a little insert which tells you a little bit about the um, um, how to use the um, watercolors. It gives you the four or five, five different steps. And um, the artist is Janet Nunn Watercolors if you're interested in that. but. Um, what I will be doing today because I am itching to try these out I have been painting with my Schminke for the past week and a bit I think and I am starting to miss vibrancy and color like crazy so um, yeah so this is I guess why I finally have gone ahead and ordered these of was it Jackson's Art? yeah so I ordered these in Jackson's Art and like I said, this is what the box looks like. The box isn't really that fantastic. There is some sort of cardboard insert at the back. And it's um, sort of, you know, thin plastic. So the way to store them, I would just take out the bottles and kind of give them a nice little either box or a space in the shelf. Something like that. Today I will drop colours into these looking like wells here but in the future I will see how these watercolors dry and whether they can be um, um, if you add water be um, what's it called not rejuvenated but reactivated how that goes if that works then I will just buy a separate palette for them and kind of drop them in there and use it that way um, so yeah, I don't know whether this is actually designed to be used as a palette or not, but I wouldn't be doing that all the time because like I said, it's a very cheap, thin plastic. So let's go ahead and do some swatches and I will also do some illustrations just to play around and see um, how the watercolors are behaving. So to say a little bit about it before I have tried them is that they are meant to be incredibly intense and saturated in colour and also they behave a little bit like ink in terms of flowing so they won't flow um, into one another like watercolour does I think this is what I heard and also the other thing is that you have to be really careful because they're quite staining. So once you put a color down, you need to be sure that this is what you, where you want that color to go because you won't be able to lift it like with watercolors. So let's go ahead and see whether that is true and how they behave. Thanks for watching.
So here I have now started to play around with the watercolors and basically what I'm trying to figure out is how to use it. It's different to normal watercolor in the way that it doesn't flow into one another. Um, as you can see here I have taken the red and tried to make it flow into the orange but it wasn't great. So the best thing to do is use water. If you want any sort of flow that's when you're going to get it. So color into color is best to mix beforehand on a palette, get the right color you want and then add water to um, thin it out and control the um, vibrancy of it. As you will see here on the, on the leaf it will, I left it for a very short time and that was it. I could not lift it. And that is a very important thing to know because you basically need to change your thinking when it comes to painting with these watercolors. You can do this if you work really quickly like you just saw with a tissue paper, I just dabbed off some color and that went removed really well. So if you work really quickly and first of all kind of have a little bit of a plan, you need to plan what you're going to do, then you can create some beautiful um, effects like for example here on the roses. I realize this is the best way to work with these watercolors. It's starting off by dark and adding water and that way the color flows beautifully and then putting the watercolors into water again makes them flow. So this is the way to go about. Yeah, that's all to say. Thanks for watching. I'll let you see the rest of the video.